Hello there, I'm Christian and you're watching a dev story. Today I'm starting a new series of videos where I won't be the one talking, but introducing other professionals that make the hard choice of switching careers to software development and became successful in the field. In these short interviews, you will get a grasp of how is the process of becoming a software developer, the struggle, the hardship, and maybe tips that can help you get into it. Today I have the great pleasure of introducing Anka Montiano. She initially graduated from law. A short time after graduating, she discovered that actually programming was her passion and decided to make the switch. She has worked in three continents and speaks six languages, and if you count Java, then seven. She has been working for over two years as a backend developer and in the meantime also getting the bachelor's degree in computer science. Join me in this interview that I had with her recently. Hi Anka, how are you? Hello, I'm good. How are you? <laughs> good, good, good. Nice to see you again. Yeah, nice um, to see you. I'll, I will start directly with the with the questions and right right to the point. You started studying law and then worked in Peru and then at one point decided to to learn Chinese in, in Shanghai. And yeah. and there you <laughs> discover programming and never look back again. How, how was the, <laughs> how how did you decide to become a software developer? at that point. Yeah, so yeah, as you said, uh, I studied law. I always was more like a science person. I did like scientific high school, so I was even in between uh, engineering or law, super different. <laughs> but um, yeah, so at some point um, when I graduated, I said, oh, I'm very young. I think I still need to like explore a little bit. And I went to China. And in China, I met people from like other areas, like software, yeah, coding, robotics and stuff like that. So that's when I met like a very good friend and he kind of guided me. He was my mentor kind of. And um, I just started like online, like Code Academy, um, Free Code Camp, like all these websites just for fun and making a website and hello world or whatever. <laughs> and then at the same time, actually, I met in China another friend, but he was on the same as me. Like he was quitting his degree and trying to switch to programming. So I think we both created kind of like synergy and like, wow, we really like this, let's do it. I, it kind of didn't go away. Like I've done that, I, I did it for a few months and then I was like, oh, this is fun. It's not yeah, going away. So then I, I thought like, yeah, I have to think of a way how to become a developer. <laughs> I've always kind of knew that I didn't want to be a lawyer, but of course, like um, when I came back from China, I, I looked for a job as like anything in a startup. I couldn't do tech yet because I was very newbie. And then um, I joined a booth camp and that was when I kind of like, okay, I'm deciding like definitely that I'm going into programming, like coding or, so I started also computer science, <laughs> but I'm doing it online. So it's not that crazy, but yeah, it just kind of came natural that, that I was going to transit to coding and stuff. I don't know. I started also going to Code Bar, and that was quite inspiring. That's where we met. I met Anka in 2017 before she made the switch. She was a mentee in Code Bar. Code Bar is a charity that facilitates the growth of a diverse tech community by running free regular programming workshops for minority groups in tech. They have chapters in over 20 cities around the world, and during these times, many sessions are being held remotely. If you are interested in participating as a mentor or mentee, don't miss their website in the description. Hanka became so committed to the organization that is now an organizer and helped creating the Shanghai chapter. Going back to the decision, when you took the decision and you say, okay, I'm going to start coding and like, I'm going to try an academy and I'm going to do the bootcamp, like what had been the, like, the biggest challenges that you faced becoming a software engineer? I still struggle every day <laughs> and I feel um, the, the hardest thing is like when you do a bootcamp is they help you find a job. 
but you still have to go through the interviews and technical assignments or whatever. So at, at the same time, it's like, it's not that you do whatever, two months, six months, five months, whatever it takes, the boost come, and then you're, okay, now I'm a developer. It's like, you never actually stop. For me, I know that, well, we know that everybody who does a boost camp, they just start there. Like, it's, it's like there's so much more to learn and that you actually need to keep learning more than someone who does a degree or something like that. Because the degree kind of gives you those four years where you have time to assimilate and learn. and not, But when you do a boost camp, it's like, right, like right to work, but you're still missing a lot. Like, so it's continuous learning. At the beginning, being able to find a job or like mm, someone who trusts you and well, like gives you the chance because this is hard, even though there's a lot of demand. And then after a few years, I still need to keep fighting, right? Like it's not that, okay, I'm settled. <laughs> So for me, definitely now boost camps, what are, I saw they're doing is kind of a preparal weeks or months, a month or a few weeks before. I still think, I think this is a good improvement because before you could just go in without doing anything. And I think that's a little bit tricky because you maybe don't even like it. Like you find, and you can find that by yourself. So I think this is a good burden because I, Sometimes people think, oh yeah, I'm going to do some coding and then I'm going to be rich because there's so much job. <laughs> but it's actually hard. Like um, once you get in there, you have to keep learning. You have to like the fact that you keep, that everything changes. Everything is like um, different a few months and everything changes so fast. So this is good. And then some boost camps maybe teach you, I don't know, I have no idea, but some language that nobody uses or very little. So it's going to be very hard for you then to find a job. So yeah. I, I would recommend to be careful which language you choose according to yeah, the market nice. or the jobs. Um, I do struggle a little bit, like um, I'm not doing full-time the degree, I'm doing it part-time, like half of the subjects per semester. So this is, um, yeah, gives me a breath. <laughs> and then in terms of um, work-wise and yeah, adapting to, I'm trying to read books like Clean Code or The Clean Coder or um, you know, like more design patterns or stuff like that, but they're very intense books. So at the same time, it's not that you can go before bed and read a little bit. So yeah, it's, um, it's work too. And what I do a lot is um, I try to do katas just to give me more like uh, problem solving and agility because sometimes at work, some things are already developed, so you don't have to think about the logic and you just either refactor or remove something or <laughs> improve it. But sometimes it's not that much business logic or you have this issue, how do you fix it, right? Like it's not that as a kata, kata is like, here's the issue, do whatever you think you can do. And there's a million of different answers. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we have to keep it alive. <laughs> yeah, that's actually good, good practice. Uh, I'll, I'll borrow that from you. Like, uh, I, I, I should do more katas as well on my, on my free time. Yeah. It's, uh, I, I, I think it's, a, it's a good exercise to keep the, you know, the, the problem solving skills uh, sharp. Yep. Since I'm with a final client, I do code a lot. Like, we are every day facing the code and requirements. And I talk with my team works to solve well the, the requirements we have and do the, uh, how can I say, the tasks. We we use like a Scrum methodology. <laughs> we try to work with sprints of two weeks. 
and uh, with everything that involves the planning, the review, the retro, refinement and stuff like that. But we don't face as much as maybe if you work in a different type of company, the clients or the like end customer. So it's cool. I mean, I like the fact that I can code and <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, so for me, as I said, like, I think you should try yourself. Like if you want to know if you're really um, able or you are, you want to be a developer, you should try before joining any bootcamp or any degree or anything. Like just get on any website, free code camp or whatever, and try, try and ask, of course, if you can someone who can guide you or give you a little bit of help and just kind of try to see if if this is like scary, like, oh, no, no, then maybe it's not <laughs> for you. But as soon as you see that it excites you and you like it and stuff like that, then definitely, yeah, Bootcamp is the fastest way. I know some people who did self-learning, self, yeah, and they teach themselves like for longer time, like, they have a job and then on this side they learn. That's an option too. Mm, it's just, I guess it's slower. So I, I don't think it's a bad option. It's just different. And then the, you can do like, if you are very crazy like me, <laughs> you can do a degree. <laughs> but I think the degree, you can just do it for fun. They can reach me out on LinkedIn. I love talking about tech, so they can reach me out. <laughs> awesome. Thank you very much again, Anka. Nice to see you. Thank you. Thank you for the interview and thanks for everything. <laughs> Bye. Have a good day. That was Anka. If you want to reach out to her, don't miss her details in the description. What do you think of the interview? Was it inspiring for you? An additional topic that I should have covered? If so, don't forget to mention it in the comment sections below. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.